it with row operations. We know that we can interchange two rows. We can multiply a row by a non-zero constant, and we can also add a multiple of one of the rows to another row. Let's take a look at this example. Here you have a system of three equations with three variables. From algebra, you might say that, hey, I know I can solve this system using pure algebra. x is equal to 3y plus 4. And you can substitute x into equation 1 and equation 3. So equation 1 becomes 3y plus 4 minus 2y plus 3z equals to 9. And the last equation becomes 2 times 3, which is 6y plus 8 minus 5y plus 5z equals to 17. So now we created a system of equation in two variables, y plus 3z is 5, and here we have y um, plus 5z is equal to 9. We can multiply the first equation by negative sign, it becomes negative y minus 3z equals to negative 5, and y plus 5z is 9. So we can cancel out these two. You end up with 2z equals to 4, or z is 2. Since z is equal to 2, we can solve for y. y is equal to 9 minus 10, so y becomes negative 1. Since you have your y, you can use the very first equation, and your x becomes negative 3 plus 4, which is 1. So the solution for the system is 1, negative 1, and 2. If this was an easy system of equations that you can solve using algebra but in but in uh using elementary row operations we're interested in applying the method that we just learned so first we're going to form the augmented matrix the augmented matrix can be written as the coefficient of x one negative one and two and the second column you have the coefficient of y's so here you have minus two 3, negative 5, and here you have the coefficient for z, which is 3, here you have 0 times z, and here you have a 5, and on the very last column, we're going to have the constants 9, negative 4, and 17. So this is called augmented matrix. If we do apply the techniques that we learned to the augmented matrix and simplify that as much as we can. Very good. So what are we going to do? We're going to, um, let's take a look at these two. We can just add R1 and R2 together, which creates, for example, 0, 1, and 3, and 5, and then add that to the second row. So let us do that, see what we, ha we have here, R1 plus R2, and then we're going to replace R2 by this new element. So R1 plus R2, here you have 0, then you have 1, then you have 3 and 5, and this new row will replace your second row. So this guy becomes 1, negative 2. 3 and 9, and here you have 0, 1, 3, 5. Let's keep the last row as it is. So then we apply what we are going to do for, the, for one of these rows. So as you can see, I created 0 below 1. My goal is to create another 0 here. So let's see, if I multiply the first row by negative 2 and add that to the last row, I can create zero here. So we're going to multiply the first row by negative two and add that to the last row. It's going to replace the last row. So negative two plus this row is going to create another zero for you below one. Negative 2 times 1, negative 2. Negative 2 times negative 2 gives you 4. Negative 2 times 3 
gives you negative six and negative two times nine gives you negative 18. We are taking this row and adding that to our three, adding that to two, negative five, five and 17. So addition gives us zero, negative one, and then negative one, and here negative one. So this becomes your new R3. So let's write everything down, one negative two, three, and nine, then zero, one, three, and five, and this is your new row which we're going to replace R3. Zero, negative one, negative one, and negative. So far, everything looks absolutely great. I have one, I have zeros below one. Now, take a look at your second one on the diagonal here. On top of it, you have a negative two, which must be zero. And on below, you have another negative one, which must be zero as well. So one by one, step by step, we try to create all the zeros that we need here. Perfect. What I'm going to do, I'm going to add R2 to R3 and replace R3. So R2 plus R3 and replace R3. If I add these two together, 0 plus 0, 0, and then I have 0, and I have 2, and then I have a 4. So my new matrix becomes 1, negative 2, 3, and 9, 0, 1. 35, 0, 0, 2, and 4. You can rewrite this matrix into system of linear equations and easily solve your system. You can also uh, go another further, perform multiplication for the last row. You can create one here. Makes it easier. Instead of doing more algebra for the system of equations, we can just write it down here. So let us multiply R3 by a half and replace by R3. So I have 1, negative 2, 3 and 9, 0, 1, 3 and 5, 0, 0, 1 and 2. Very good. So let us rewrite this. I have x minus 2y plus 3z equals to 9. Then I have 0x, 1y plus 3z equals to 5. 0x plus 0y plus 1z equals to 2. Hey, I solved it easily. My z is equal to 2. I substitute this here. y plus 6 is 5. So y is negative 1. I substitute both of them in the very first equation. What do I see? I have 1 plus 2 plus 6 equals 2. 9, and this is 1x. And x becomes 1. So the solution of the system is 1, negative 1, and 2. The intersection between these planes these 3 planes is at the point 1, negative 1, and 2. As you can see, we formed row echelon 4, and then here we have a reduced row echelon formed for the original matrix. This is our original matrix, which is now is written in uh, using the row operations and converting everything into a simpler form, which we have in form of row echelon form.